Welcome to Beverly Unitarian Church. I'm the Reverend David Schwartz, minister here, and it is a pleasure to join with you in online worship this morning. We are a Unitarian Universalist congregation. We're a community of children and youth and adults of many races, many faiths and beliefs, many identities, many genders, sexual orientations, abilities, educations, incomes, traditions. We are a mixed multitude, and here we celebrate this diversity, including the diversity of belief, striving always to make space for more. All of you is sacred, and all of you is welcome here. Whatever your past was like, whatever this present moment is like for you, the invitation is to journey into the future together. Like other Unitarian Universalist congregations, what binds us together, what unites us, is not a set of creeds or doctrines, but a set of shared values and principles. And I invite you to take a look at the seven principles on uua.org, the website for a denomination if you're new to Unitarian Universalism. I am delighted this morning to welcome our guest preacher. She's going to introduce herself in just a moment, but it is the Reverend Terry Schwartz, who is my wife, my spouse, my co-minister up the road at the First Unitarian Church of Chicago, where she and I serve together. And it is a delight to have her with you this morning. She was here with you all last year, and it's good to have her back again, even virtually. We especially welcome visitors, and I hope that you'll stay for the virtual coffee hour after the service on Zoom. The link gets shared at the very, very end of the service or in your weekly Friday email. And if you're not on that, send a note to uh, the church Facebook page or send a note to the office through the website, email address out there. Due to coronavirus, we're forced to distance ourselves physically, but we can still stay connected. In addition to Sunday worship, in addition to our coffee hour, we have a few groups that gather still by phone and Zoom, some for community, some for business. To get involved, check out the Facebook page, check out the website, contact the office, sign up for the weekly newsletter to get connected with what's going on. I invite you now to join together in spirit, to prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Welcome. Good morning. I am the Reverend Terry Schwartz, Senior Co-Minister at the First Unitarian Church of Chicago, where I serve in co-ministry with my spouse, the Reverend David Schwartz, your minister here at Beverly Unitarian Church. It is an honor to be able to be with you in your virtual worship, and I extend my gratitude to Reverend David for his kind uh, offer for me to be the pulpit guest today. On behalf of us both, I send greetings and warm wishes from the, our congregation here in Hyde Park uh, to our neighbors down in Beverly. While this has been a time of physical distance, it is wonderful to be able to be together in a virtual space. We are stronger together 
as people, communities, and as Unitarian Universalists. Come, let us worship together. Our words for reflection to open our worship today are from the Tao Te Ching. Verse 15. The ancient masters were profound and subtle. Their wisdom was unfathomable. There is no way to describe it. All we can describe is their appearance. They were careful as someone crossing an iced over stream, alert as a warrior in enemy territory, courteous as a guest, fluid as melting ice, shapeable as a block of wood, receptive as a valley, clear as a glass of water. Do you have the patience to wait till your mud settles and the water is clear? Can you remain unmoving till the right action arises by itself? The master doesn't seek fulfillment, not seeking, not expecting. She is present and can welcome all things. We come as a people seeking patience, waiting for the mud of our minds and our world to settle. We kindle the flame of our chalice that it might light our path as we look for the right action, for clarity, for peace, and for one another. For this hour, may we not seek nor expect that we might be present and can welcome all things, if even for a short time. will you join me in the words of our covenant, the commitment that we make to each other about what it is we're doing here, why we gather, who we're becoming and who we are. Love is the spirit of this church and service its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. I invite you to warmly, warmly greet those who have gathered today in the chat, remembering it's public. Say hello. Welcome.
I invite you now to join with me in a spirit of prayer and meditation. Be where you are. Let this place hold you up. Let yourself be grounded. Let yourself be elevated. Spirit of life and of love, called by many names, known in many ways, experienced in many ways, our hope and our prayer this morning is to remember who we are and to remember who we're called into becoming, to remember that it takes work day by day to answer that call, to remember that we are beloved exactly as we are, and that we're invited into a larger and larger life. Spirit of life, spirit of love, that force that lives between two people when they meet each other wholly face to face, our hope and our prayer this morning is to remember ourselves exactly so that we can turn to face the world again, to serve the world, to be of use, not in grand and great ways, but in the everyday ways of our everyday living. Amen. Throughout the week, we have full lives. We have experiences of joy and of sorrow. And on Sundays, we come to put these experiences, to put the fullness, the richness of our lives into each other's hands. We share our joys and we share our sorrows with each other. And I invite you in just a moment to put those into the chat. When we meet in person, we light candles for these. And so in the chat, if you have a joy or a sorrow that's too tender to be spoken aloud, to be typed aloud, enter in I, I, as if you were raising two fingers in silence, just like we would in person, to light a candle for you in silence. I invite you now to trust those joys and sorrows into each other's hands. I'm listening. I am listening, Spirit, speak to me. I'm listening, I am listening, Spirit, speak to me. My ears are wide open. Open. My eyes are now open to see what I may be. I'm listening. I am listening. Spirit, speak to me. I'm listening, I am listening, in this moment of Spirit silence. speaks to me, I can hear the voices of all my kind, I'm listening, singing, I am listening, this tweeting, how singing to who? My ears are wide open, and oh, oh, the joy. My eyes are wide open, oh, 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 the love to see to what hear I for may you be. and me. Oh, oh, oh. I'm listening in this moment of silence. I am listening. I hear spirit speak through. Our sacred text for reflection this week is chapter 15 of the Tao Te Ching. Do you have the patience to wait till your mud settles and the water is clear? This perhaps always appealed to me because having clear water or a clear mind in this case doesn't come easily to me. I usually have endless tasks of to-dos 
things to do, people to see, appointments, all running in my head at once. And my mind can become really good at multitasking and remembering things. But when it comes to being mindful, it's far more challenging. I've been wondering during this time of pandemic, if meditation and self-care is a real luxury and feeling kind of guilty if that's the best use of my time during a really strenuous and demanding time. My meditation teacher was reflecting on this question and he responded in a way that I think is really wise. Um, that what we do to show up for ourselves, for clarity of mind, has a direct impact on the people around us. So even if we're not living with other people, we interact with uh, one another, even in quarantine, whether that's by phone or by computer, or even uh, a stranger six feet away on a walk outside. So I found it really interesting going back to this text to find that even in the translations themselves, there is this connection between the inner undisturbed state and the outer state. So in my preferred translation by Stephen Mitchell is the one that I just read to you. Do you have the patience to wait till your mud settles and the water is clear? The second translation I wanna share with you is just slightly different. It says, who can wait quietly while the mud settles? Now this is a question, the first one is directed directly to the reader or the listener. Now this one is bigger, it's saying who among us in our whole community can do that? Now the third one I think is very interesting. The second one is translated by Ju Fu Feng and Jane English. The last one I wanna share with you is who can by stillness, little by little, make what is troubled grow clear. So in the original text, there is a connection between, and it can be interpreted in English in all these different ways, that what is happening in our internal uh, state uh, can then affect what in the external world is troubled to grow clear. So there's wisdom deeper in that language that as English readers, we wouldn't necessarily wouldn't necessarily see without hearing these multiple translations. And I think that's really fitting for a mindful practice, for mindfulness practice, and how we show up for ourselves. As someone who lives with and manages chronic pain, um, I had the realization a couple of weeks ago during this quarantine that supporting clarity of mind and mental health and spiritual health requires more than I did pre-quarantine. And a physical metaphor made this really clear. Most of the time now I do pretty well with very little pain as long as I'm getting enough activity and enough stretching and physical care for my body. Sometimes maybe once or twice a week I need uh, like a prescription strength ibuprofen. And then a couple of times a year I need a very strong prescription medication to get me through a pain flare. So I was kind of thinking that my mind should take care of itself, that this is the equivalent of a mental pain flare, but I should just be doing stretching extra well that I would usually do, and that should be enough. Well, that's not true in our physical body, so why should that be true in our mental health? We like to think that our minds will just take care of themselves, but that's not true. We have to take care of them, just like any other part of our bodies. And this is wisdom that goes back millennia. So we think about these in neurological terms um, because of our scientific research and discovery. This is a great way for us to understand what's happening neurologically. Um, and it's fascinating and opening all sorts of ways to treat the mind uh, and treat uh, mental illness and promote health and wellness, which then has a direct impact on our bodies because it's interconnected and then on our being in the community. But for millennia, uh, the careful observers of the human condition in our religious traditions have known this to be true. And in every religious tradition, there are contemplative spiritual practices to bring calm to the mind and the nervous system. So in the Western tradition, these are 
chants the monastic communities, Luxio Divina, which is a uh, contemplative form of reading sacred text um, in a meditative way, um, meditative forms of prayer, um, church music is, is part of that, and that's something we practice here at First Unitarian. Um, and in the mystical traditions throughout the world, there are ways to tap into this physical reality of how our bodies and minds are wired. And so it is an important practice. And I like to think that if I do a little bit, then that's all I need. And it turns out not to be true. It's very much like exercising. You know, you start like, I'm going to start this new exercise plan. And I've worked out really hard for three days now. And I'm really disappointed that I'm not in super great shape. It takes time. I know when I meditate regularly, it takes me about four weeks before I start to notice a difference in how my brain is functioning. And it's somewhat like riding a bike, a balance between a certain engagement and a certain just utter presence um, and stepping back from the usual patterns of thought. And that's a new way of functioning neurologically. Um, and it can be tremendously transformative. So I was thinking about that this week and thinking about this metaphor of the mud or the sediment settling. And so I created an experiment to see what this looks like visually. So in the church garden, I poured sand into a large vase. And when I started this project, I thought that it would settle in about 10 minutes and I was going to make a neat and tidy time-lapse video that would show A to Z, 10 minutes done, and I would then make it even shorter for the purposes of worship, it turns out just like my thoughts about meditation and exercise, there is no instant gratification here. And this is a far, far better metaphor and example for the reality of mindfulness and um, use of spiritual technologies and practice. So we're gonna go outside to the garden and see how our experiment has gone. Now I thought it would settle in about 10 minutes and that would be that. And it has taken 21, 22 hours to get to this point. And you can see, you still can't quite see through it. Um, it will probably take another 24 hours uh, to become completely clear because that's a lot of sand and a lot of sediment um, uh, for a relatively small amount of water. So like the sand in this water, it takes time for us to care for our minds and our spirits and to do so regularly. So let's go back inside the church and have a little practice together at a couple simple breathing exercises that can help ground and center us in a way that we can build on bit by bit, day by day, to help our mind go clear as well. I wanna teach you a technique called square breathing. This is something I've used in the hospital with patients when I've served as a chaplain and on a detox unit. The beauty of it is it's very simple and it does work pretty quickly uh, to calm our nervous system, slow our heart rate and reduce our blood pressure. So I invite you to get a little comfortable with where you're sitting, feel the points of contact with the chair or the floor um, wherever position, if you can keep your spine straight and something grounded on the floor, that will help. Take a few deep breaths to get started. Calm yourself and put your hands gently in your lap. You can find a point to gaze at, or you might want to close your eyes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let you gaze at the rose window if you like, because I know for many people, it is an image of beauty among our community and one of contemplation. Now for square breathing, you'll inhale for four counts, hold for four counts, and exhale for four counts. Wait four counts, and then inhale for four counts so on and so forth, like you're tracing the path around a square. 
Now, everyone's exact counts may vary. Your pacing of your counts uh, based on your lung capacity and how you're feeling that day. But to demonstrate, I'll count you off so that we can all take a few breaths together. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Wait, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. One, two, three, four. So you can adapt this for your own pace, depending on where you at are at in a given day and your mood and how your body is feeling. Pretty quickly, because we have control uh, the voluntary aspect of our breathing, we can then use that as a tool to impact how our bodies and our minds are functioning. And when we do that, we start to be able to see our world and those around us with greater clarity. It may take time of working on this every day, and it may take time in every session before we really notice a difference. I had a um, student at one point who was practicing meditation with me, um, follow her practice for a couple of weeks. And when she met with me for further uh, directions, she said, okay, I've been doing it, what next? And I said, well, we just keep doing it. And she said, but I finished doing it. And I said, well, you kind of keep doing it for the rest of our lives. It's like walking or eating nutrition, breathing clean air. These are things that we need in an ongoing way to replenish ourselves. And we often think that our brains will just take care of themselves, but they need care just like every other aspect of us. And when we care for ourselves, that has a really big impact on the world. And that is true. The uh, in the writers of that sacred text, remember that the same words pointed to divergent realities that are interconnected. Do we have the patience until our mud becomes clear? And then by stillness, little by little, make what is troubled in the broader world clear. And there couldn't be more of a time when the broader world is troubled and that time calls for even more clarity of mind and peace that we can cultivate in our own bodies, minds, and spirits. And may a bit of that peace be with you now and in the week to come. Take care. So like a ship lost out to sea, sliding far away, far away from me. So like a ship that's run aground, grinding over sand, lost but also found. If I go still and at the end 
For just this moment, may we not seek nor expect, but just be, that in this space, we may welcome all things. Our worship is over, but our service begins. Go forth in peace and be a blessing on the world. Amen. <laughs>